as we come together today, I, I think about, I don't know, I've been, this is all of the events that have been going on in the world has been weighing on me. Um, I always, uh, when major things happen, I, I try to slow down and, and to listen and say, okay, God, where, where are you showing up in all of this? Where do you, um, where are you present? Where are you working? I, I don't believe God has caused these things to happen. I know different Christian leaders have made comments like that. I don't think that's how God is working. But I do know that God uh, is working within the events that go on in the world. And a great solidarity is taking place. Um, anytime there's suffering, we, we have to slow down and pay attention to, to how suffering brings us together. Uh, suffering bypasses all race and gender and religion and nation. Uh, it, it surpasses all different uh, dividing lines from the rich and the poor. It, you know, suffering brings us together in a kind of unity that has been just unprecedented in our world. And so when, it, when these things happen, it's easy to focus on the negatives. It's easy to focus on uh, all the bad things happening. But whenever it comes time uh, to pay attention to the suffering, we recognize that there's a lot of good that's going on. And I've been trying to pay attention to that. And there's a lot of, a lot of people who are sharing resources for free. There's a lot of uh, musicians that are doing concerts in their living rooms for free. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of people that are coming together, and I've been encouraged by our church by uh, the way that different people have just, without any thought, gone and called one another to, uh, to go do grocery shopping and, and to make sure each other's needs are met. And, you know, we were talking the other day about uh, the need for toilet paper. Someone said they really need toilet paper, and someone else who's in our, our, our group conversation sent them a text message right then and said, hey, I'm bringing toilet paper to your house. And I just, I love uh, the way that community comes together during times of suffering. But this is also a time of, uh, that the Christian world recognizes as, as the time of Lent. Uh, we, we've talked some about Lent in our church, and Lent is a time of, of recognizing, it's a whole season in the Christian calendar of recognizing that the world is broken. The world is not as God intended for it to be, uh, but it's a time of waiting. Uh, what are we waiting for? We're anticipating the resurrection, where, where Christ conquered death. He came out of death on the other side, and that all the suffering of this world is going to be made right because of Jesus Christ, because of the resurrection. So this happening during this time of Lent, we look forward to Easter. We look forward to the celebration of the resurrection, where where Christ has made all things right again. And when we see Christ in the resurrection, conquering death, we, we are reminded that he's the God of peace, made flesh. That the, the God who breathed life into this world brings, breathes life into us in the spirit. And we have, we have God within us in a way that should transform us into being people of peace. And so we read this passage in Mark chapter 4. I'm gonna, we're going to read it a few times this morning, but I'm going to read it for us right now. In Mark chapter 4, verse 30 through 41, uh, Jesus has been talking about the kingdom of God, and this is the last thing he says about the kingdom of God in this section. He says, what shall, uh, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all the garden plants. With such big branches that the, the birds can perch in its shade. You know, with many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he made everything clear. That day when evening came, he said to the disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, 
just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him, and a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples awoke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up. He rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and he was completely calm. He said to his disciples, What are you afraid of? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. One of the beautiful things that we have to remember is that as Christians, the worst thing that can happen to us is that this coronavirus put us to sleep and wake us up next to Jesus. That, that's a hard reality to grasp. It's a hard reality to swallow. But <clears throat> the God who spoke all of existence into being is bigger than the winds and the waves. And he lives within us in the spirit. And so in, in this time, we, we see the disciples with a storm brewing around them. They are frantic while Jesus is asleep. They are terrified while Jesus is calm. And his question to them is, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Because the one who's with them is the one who speaks and the winds die down and the storm calms. And I don't know what you're needing to hear in that this morning. And we're going to have some time to, for you to reflect on that passage. But I, I want to keep talking about the church's mission that earlier in this passage, it talks about being the mustard seed and the mustard plant. And that when the plant grows up, the kingdom of God provides shelter and shade for the birds. And the kingdom of God is called into existence to be a place of calm serenity, a, a place of sanctuary, a place of rest for a world that is in chaos. <clears throat> and so when we recognize that the world's in chaos, how do we respond to it? <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter 2, um, <clears throat> this passage came to me as I, as I thought about this passage in Mark. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul says, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace that you've been saved, and God raised him, or he, he raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> For it is by grace that you've been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It's a gift from God. Not by works so that no one can boast. And this is the verse I really want you to pay attention to. It says, because of that, for you are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. And so as we look at the storm brewing around us and we see the solidarity of the world that, that comes together in suffering, we, we've already been given work to do by God. He's already ordained it that we would suffer with the world so that the world may know the love of Christ. And so I, I want to challenge us as a church to do a few things together. Uh, the one thing I'd like for us to do together as a church, and we've done this before, but I want us all to set an alarm on our phones for Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. And I want us to come together at 11.30 on Wednesday, um, every Wednesday while this is going on, until this virus is stopped. I want us to come together together and to pray. And I'll, I'll send this out for everybody to kind of 
to see in case you can't write it down. But I want us to pray for a few things. First, I want us to pray for an unbelieving world, a world that doesn't know Christ, a world that is confused, a world that is desperate, a world that is scared and terrified. We need to pray for a world to come and know the peace that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I want to also pray for those who are on the front lines of this pandemic, for the, the first responders, the medical workers, and everyone who has to continue to go into their jobs to keep our society up and running. We also need to pray for those without jobs, those who are living paycheck to paycheck who won't have income. Uh, we need to not just pray for them, but we need to pray um, that our eyes are open to see how we can help during these times. We need to pray for the vulnerable, those who are more susceptible to, um, to catch this virus and to, to be greatly harmed by it. Uh, and ultimately, we need to pray that God intervene. And during this time, uh, I want to ask, I really want to challenge us to consider coming together and fasting together. Um, if you just want to fast through lunch on Wednesday, give up, give up lunch on Wednesday and just dedicate that to a time of prayer. Um, if you want to fast the whole day, do that. But often throughout scripture, we see that whenever major things are happening, the first thing they did was they came together for fasting and prayer. So I want to, I want to challenge us to do that. So on Wednesdays, I, I plan on fasting. So I, I hope that you will join me in a time of fasting and prayer.